Hi, everyone who's joining us now for our second workshop of our fun day. The, I'm with Josie Holland of Dragon or Sapphire Dragon Studios, and she's going to be demonstrating how to make her adorable candy apple stable mates. So why don't we get right to it, Josie? Sure. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm going to be making, as you said, my candy apple stable mate um, uh, featured in one of the photo contests, and it's a really good beginner and intermediate. You can even go into uh, higher levels of detail and I'll get into that in a little bit with it. Um, but it's really super cute and fun to make and easy. Uh, anybody could really do it as long as you you know, have access to an oven. Creating the peanuts is um, not hard at all. They're not real. They're actually made out of clay. So I'll show you how to make the peanuts and maybe a few other accessories as well. The most important thing is you want to have references. So I got some delicious candy apples uh, for my references. I'll be making, obviously, the cherry coating with the peanuts instead of the caramel, but they didn't have any cherry coatings. And now, so, Josie, so for our guests who are just joining us, um, can they still participate without baking the little clay pieces for right absolutely, now? Absolutely. Yep. Um, it's, they can participate. Uh, the only thing is, is it takes about 10 minutes to bake the clay pieces um, on an oven to set at 275. So if you wanted to uh, set your oven now so it's prepared and you should be able to cut up the pieces right along with me because we do a few things in between. So it gives not only the Mod Podge coloration time to dry, but it'll also give you time to have your clay baked and cool off just a little bit. Awesome. So getting right into it, the first thing you want to do is you want to pick out your favorite stable mate that you want to create. Uh, obviously, I think my favorite is kind of Magnolia right now. And you clean off your model. You don't have to do any prep work, especially if it's just something very basic. Um, the only prep work I would do is if you want to create a more realistic looking apple. So I do have this guy from Briarfest Fun Kits. And creating a realistic apple I'll go over real quick it's it's not hard at all it's really basic simple painting you get your color that you want of your apple which I do have oh let me go over my my set list for you because you got to know what we're going to be using so obviously you want something to paint in your coloration to or your water to clean your paints your coloration of your paints I use acrylic it I don't prefer a brand over another it's just kind of whatever our works. I like folk art a lot. Apple Barrel's really good. I'm really into these metallics lately. That one is for a more uh, fantasy color apple because I've seen a lot of people put edible glitter in their foods. So this kind of recreates an edible glitter. The colors that I basically use for creating either a realistic apple or even having chocolate to create chocolate candy coating. These are to help me create a peanut butter coating or a caramel coating. Then obviously candy apple uh, colors like this. They don't have to be matte, glossy, anything like that. I prefer matte because the Mod Podge is glossy and it'll create that glossy coat. And now they can, um, anyone who's watching, they can buy these paints at any local art store, correct? Uh, absolutely. Um, I go to Walmart, Michaels, um, any craft store will carry these basic paints. Um, obviously brushes, you don't really need any kind of fancy brush for this. The only one that I recommended as an optional for the realistic candy apple is the dry brush. Uh, these are also called stubble brushes. Uh, they are really nice to do and they're dry brushes because you don't use water on them. Acrylics are water-based. So a lot of times to thin them out, you would use water. Um, dry brushes are great because you just get as much paint off of it as you can and it creates really nice streaking methods, which I use for my blue Rowans and stuff and those kind of coatings. Uh, we've got lollipop sticks. I've got the, the straw sticks. I've got the treat sticks. You can use whatever kind of stick you want. You can go outside and get a twig off a tree, whatever works for you. Uh, you've got, you're gonna need an X-Acto knife or you know any kind of sharp object to cut up the clay. I've got tweezers just to help attach the peanuts because if we're going to be using the super glue, you want to be careful not to get in contact with your skin because then you'll have peanuts all over your fingers. 
So I've got tweezers just in case. Uh, the clay I use is Sculpey and uh, Primo is one of their better clays. It does hold up really well, but they do have uh, Sculpey 3, which works great too, especially for little projects like this. Uh, so I've got the base, the only base color that you need is beige because you can paint on top of that with any of your acrylic paints. I do have a large assortment of colored clays. So I do try to make it easy on myself that if I'm creating something in that color, instead of painting it, I'll use the clay for it. But I recommended beige because you can paint this any color you want. I do also have some white um, because I was making marshmallows last night. So I've got that set aside plus my chocolates. And then I do have a glow in the dark one too. I'll get into that when we get to the decorations. Mod Podge is super awesome, super important. There's different kinds of Mod Podge. Any kind will work as long as it's gloss. I recommend the high glossed Mod Podge because then it really gives that bright, flashy, uh, glossy color that you see on candy. Uh, you can use anything for the treat sticks that you want to decorate it. I did use twine on my first Magnolia. So if you want to use twine, that's great. If you don't like that style, I'll show you a couple other styles that are on this selection that I did this week. And then I think that might be everything except for little extras here and there, which I'll go over when we're doing the treats and such. Awesome. And just so for our viewers who just um, joined us, uh, we are streaming this through YouTube, but you can access it via our social media platforms like Facebook and Instagram. And you are more than welcome to ask questions in the chat and uh, we will get those to Josie to answer. All right. Great. So we're going to um, show real quick how to do the uh, um, the, the realistic apple, which they're really super and easy to do. Um, all you gotta do is take a regular, regular brush, some acrylic paint, and then you want to just gently and carefully scrape off as much paint on your palette as possible. And they're gonna run that paint across your stable mate. I'm hoping that you can, do I need to get a little closer? There we go. And it kind of creates this streaking effect that you see on apples all the time. They go from their core piece and outwards. So Josie, what, I, what made you um, come up with this idea? Because it's super cute. And we had a lot of comments leading up to this that this is such a creative idea. Um, it, I don't know. I mean, I kind of was coming up with different type of food stable mates because I like a lot of deco. And uh, I, I kind of just had this magnolia and secret, uh, she actually glows in the dark too. So I sprayed her with some glow in the dark paint. And I'm like, well, what do I wanna do with her? And then it was getting to be fall time. And I just started putting red on her cause I was gonna try making a zombie horse and I didn't really like it. So I was like, what about food? And I just kind of threw the coating on cause it kind of looked like a candy apple. And I've been playing with the Sculpey paint or the Sculpey clay for quite a while, creating different things with Sculpey. And I've made food in Sculpey before. So I just took the peanuts that I had made for some other project and glued them on. And I'm like, oh, and then I got like the stick and added the pumpkin. And I was like, oh, cool, candy apple. And it was just kind of random that I did this and I didn't, I haven't made another one since just because it was kind of a, a whim. And then I started like, oh, I'm going to make a slushy horse and a popcorn that is so horse. Creative. And so with the, um, the green, you just want to make it look like it's streaking from the center. And when you streak him outwards, it'll create that look of a rounded apple. And it doesn't have to be a solid color. You actually want, let's see if I can get it to focus in. You want white streaks because that's going to create a more realistic looking uh, flesh of the fruit. Because if it's just a solid color, it, uh, I mean, solid colors are fine, especially, you know, little ones just wanting to paint it their favorite colored apple. 
but if you want realistic, you want those streaks. So once you have your base coat of the realistic apple, like I said, I'm gonna show realistic really quick because you don't have to do a realistic apple. You can use the original finishes, which I love the color on that magnolia, just that cute little pearl essence green and uh, cream colored is perfect for any apple. But you wanna let the acrylics dry, which I love acrylics because they dry so quickly. And once they're dried, then you can start adding other colors, such as I put a little bit of brown streaks going on to him. And apples kind of, they can be any color at this point. And I like the ones that are multicolored because they just are a little bit more cute to look at. So I'm going, I've got my bit green base. I've added a few brown streaks and with brown streaks, it's the same idea. You just take the brown acrylic and then get as much paint off of that brush as possible. And then you're gonna take it and you're just gonna gently drag it up across the dry green. And it creates those streaked lines that are similar to apple skins. And depending on how close you wanna get it to look like an apple, you can throw like some dots cause apples aren't perfect. And like uh, so many other artists say, come in this having fun. Don't expect it to be, you know, the Mona Lisa. You're supposed to just enjoy doing the process. So my apple's not gonna be perfect. We can make it however we want. <laughs> exactly, this is your fun. This is just for you to enjoy. I, lo I love painting the stable, stable mates. It's so cathartic just sitting, you know, when you're having a busy day, you just go and break out some paints and a blank stable mate and you can create whatever you want. Which I'm super, gr super grateful that you guys do create the blank stable mates for us because um, I do paint over a lot of the original finishes and it makes me sad because some of them are just so gorgeous. So it makes it's a little less guilty painting over the white ones. Yeah, and for anyone watching, if you're looking for the blank stable mates, we sell them online or if you go to your local retailer, they come in this really cute little pack with three little colors, a little blank stable mate in various poses. We also have blank unicorns with really fun fantasy paint so you can paint and create till your heart's desire. <laughs> My kids love them. And it's really nice, fun project. It's like I want to do it for her birthday party where we get a bunch of blank stable mates and just have the kids that come paint them. Oh, I love that. So you, you put some brown on there. It gives a little bit more definition. I like to tend, uh, I like, I tend to put the darker colors more in the shadowed areas. For me, it just kind of creates a more realistic horse versus an apple. So if you can see, I've got the brown streaking going up around him. Let's see, is it gonna? Oh yeah, that's really cool. Let me see if it'll focus for me here. Oh, there we go. Focus for me. <laughs> there we go. Okay, now you can see the streak. Yeah, wow. So it creates depth to the horse too, so you can actually see the features on it as well. So yeah, you're getting an apple on there, but you're also getting a horse too. So I pulled out some red, because I'm gonna add that to the top because this will have to be one of those Granny Smiths that has just a touch of color in it. Like I said, pull off as much paint as you can off your brush. And then you just slide it across slightly, not a lot of pressure because you want it to streak. So let's see if I can get them up there. There he goes. Very cool. And the key to getting the streaks, you uh, you dip your paint in the brush and you wipe it off a little bit on the side of the palette. Yep, I wipe off as much paint as possible. Uh, you really don't want a lot of paint, heavy paint on it or it just globs it on there. Now that's great for base coating and everything, but not so much for you know light coat streaking or dry brushing. This is, I'll show you how to do it with the yellow. Um, dry brushing is one of my favorite things to do on the horses. I don't do a lot of heavy wet painting on them 
um, because dry brushing to me creates a little bit more realistic looking uh, painting. And I, I did this growing up uh, painting ceramics with my mom uh, that it's one of my favorite things to use in shading and just about everything that has to do it. And you can create realistic hair looking with it too. Dry brushing, do not wet the brush. So you take a little bit of paint into the brush and you just sit there with a paper towel or a towel and like dab off as much paint as possible. You want paint up in the brush, but you don't want so much that it just saturates it. And then you're gonna take that coloration off of the dry brush, which this is just optional. Obviously we were doing it with the other brush just fine, but the dry brush helps with less paint application. So you're not overdoing it. So adding a little bit of yellow on top is gonna to take a couple of layers because it's a lighter color and you're not gonna have it show up instantly. So you're gonna get a lot of paint at first and then you're just gonna kind of work it off the brush and then drag it across like you've been doing with the other one and it adds that yellow tone to the apple. Very nice. And, and for get more any of in. our participants looking at the video, if you miss something in the beginning or just joining us now, these are going to be recorded and posted on Briar's website for you guys to go back and really look at the um, all the steps and create as many of these adorable candy apple stable baits as you want. <laughs> So we're going to put the, the realistic one aside for now, because that one, you can take as much time as you want to detail out the apple base coating. Um, I do seal them with uh, any kind of matte sealant. I can, I just go to Walmart and buy, you know, Krylon and use that. So I'll show you real quick how to make the candy apple and I'll put it on this magnolia. So you want to get your Mod Podge out and you want to pour some of that into container. Mod Podge is great. It's either really thick or really thin. And the ratio isn't really important. You don't need a lot of color added into the Mod Podge to make it work. Um, my ratio was one fourth, but honestly, it's more like a drop of paint inside of the Mod Podge. And you can obviously add as much as you want, but then it takes longer. Um, to saturate and dry. Red is great because it really mixes well and you don't need a lot of paint. So you just add a little bit of acrylic to your Mod Podge and mix it all up. And now the Mod Podge can also be found at any local craft store, Walmart, um, yep. if any of the participating um, anyone participating at home doesn't have it on hand. Yeah, it's um, my go-to is Michael's and they always carry it and they have multiple different um, types of Mod Podge. I do know that Walmart carries a few select of them. And you prefer okay. to use the gloss. Yep, gloss is going to help create that shiny, glossy candy coat look. Um, if you want to use matte uh, the, for either a chocolate style or uh, something that you don't want glossy, you can add gloss later to it as well. You just get a gloss finish and put it over top. So you want to get the, the mixture really well. And then this is the complete opposite of creating that detailed uh, apple. This you want nice, super thick, gloopy layers. So you're going to take the gloop and you're gonna plop it right on the horse. And this is the easiest thing in the world is just glooping it on nice and thick because I like to have a little bit of um, 3D rays to it because like on real candy apples, they do have a little bit of an edge. And then you're gonna so paint- So you're just putting a lot on the brush and just glopping it on the horse, not brushing it in, not smearing it in to get that effect. Right. I mean, you, you do have to move your brush around a little bit, but yeah, it, it, essentially it's just glopping the paint right on top of the model and uh, 
coating as much as you want. And you don't even have to coat the entire model. You don't have to coat. If you want to leave one leg stranded, that's fine. It's whatever you feel your horse wants to look like. And now it, you can do various colors with this, right? You can make a yellow candy apple horse, a green one, a red one. Absolutely. And, and you can get super fun and crazy with it too. It's, you know, if you don't like cherry coating, you can actually make, I did a peanut butter with, it's a chocolate turtle basically. So you've got the peanut butter, Oh my caramel gosh. with um chocolate and peanuts all around him. I did a blue raspberry with holiday sprinkles. That is so adorable. <laughs> and that is the metallic, it's kind of hard to see, but um that's the metallic looking color too. The the acrylic paint. Here is a chocolate s'mores. Oh my goodness. So got graham crackers, chocolate chunks, chocolate pieces, and marshmallows. The marshmallows will glow in the dark. And then I've got a s'more on top. Oh, that does not want to focus. Focus. Fo ah, there we go. Focused. So the creative possibilities are endless with these guys. I love that. It's whatever. This is peanut butter and uh, coconut. You can do whatever you want. If you love watermelon, make a watermelon candy apple. If you love birthday cake, make a birthday cake candy apple. I love that. It's, it's however you feel it. So you want to just coat it, it. Then this is the best part of the process is just glooping this paint on. It's so easy. The thicker, the better. And let's see if I can get it up there. Um, there we go. I like making messes. This is the workshop for you. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and this is what, um, if you want to, you know, it does take about 24 hours to, uh, 32 hours for the Mod Podge to completely finish off. So it will take some time for it to dry. You can add the candy coating toppings while it's wet, which I've done. I actually think I did with this one over here. Cause I gave her about two layers. Uh, this one's actually looking really good where I don't think we're going to need a second layer, but you can add the candy coatings. You just won't use the glue. You'll have the Mod Podge um, attach the candy instead. Okay. And when the Mod Podge dries, it'll act as the glue and it'll hold it on. Yep. The only thing I do is um, I think that's actually how I created this Magnolia. It's just quicker to use super glue. But I think I created her by attaching the peanuts while it was wet. And then I put another layer of clear Mod Podge, like I didn't add color to it, over top of the peanuts so that they don't fall off at all. Okay. But they're very solid. That's Mod a cool Podge tip is great. if you're in a rush. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. If, you, if you're trying to do, you know, an hour workshop, it definitely helps out. So, you know, coat the horse as much as you want. Um, as, you know, candy apples usually go right up to the stick and everything. If you want to go right up to where the stick's going to be perfectly up to you. So I'm going to gloop her little nose because it's one of my favorite spots on her. And that's pretty much all you have to do is add that candy coating. You can use whatever kind of candy coating um, that you come up with. So I'm gonna set her aside and clean up my paint gloop because we're all done with the acrylic paints after painting that. So once that's complete, you're gonna to wanna to move on to making your candy pieces with your clay. And that's where we would need the X-Acto knife and then the, the little tan clay pieces. Correct. So we're just gonna get out and I'll, I'll give you a minute to finish up your glooping. Uh, you're gonna need exacto knife and clay. Right now, all we're gonna need is clay because we're gonna shape the clay. So let me pull out all of this. And you're able to get this clay again at any um, art supply store, Walmart. Um, well, I've Walmart seen it. doesn't carry it, but uh, Hobby Lobby and Michaels, 100%. Awesome.
So you're going to take out your Sculpey and this part is really quick, really easy, um, not very complicated as well. It's perfect beginner horse, to be honest. And you're gonna take off just not even a large chunk, just a small chunk of clay. And the Sculpey is really nice because it is a bakeable clay. So you don't have to air it out. It won't air dry on you if you have to come back to it. And you want to sit there and want to earlier that you just put it in for about 10 minutes. Yeah, at 275 is Sculpey Bakes. And the, the rule of thumb, which they conveniently put right on the package for you, is uh, you bake it for 30 minutes per half an inch, where is it? One fourth inch, you wanna bake for at least 30 minutes. So about 10 minutes gives your peanuts just enough time to harden while still being pliable because it'll make it easier to cut them. Okay. I'll show you how to make a few different of these while our, our gloop on our ponies drying so that it has a little bit of time. So you wanna make sure that your clay has no air bubbles, um, that it's needed. And the more you need and um, work Sculpey, the warmer it gets and the softer it gets. It'll be easier to work with. And now did you have, did you play around with a few different brands of clay uh, before you found Sculpty or were you just always a huge fan of this type of clay for the candy apple horses? I actually watched an artist create little dragons on her Facebook page for a long time and it kind of got me into it and she prefers Sculpey. So I started off with Sculpey and I've never gone to anything else. <laughs> Very cool. And it, it's definitely one of the top brands for any kind of poly clay. So I just play with the clay and you know, if you're, you're having a bad day, this is a good thing to do. It gets all, it's a stress relief, stress ball. Yeah, it is super fun to play with. <laughs> it is. And now what got you started into customizing, doing all these really cool decorators? What was kind of your inspiration and start into that? Uh, I saw an artist on Facebook about three years ago painting a briar horse. And I was like, that looks fun. So I painted my first stable mate because I, they sold them at Walmart and I picked one up and I painted it and I was like, this is really fun. So I started getting into the iceberg of briar customizations <laughs> and uh, very, I followed the, the customizers, the artists, the, the collectors, just the whole hobby itself. I, it kind of blew up on me. <laughs> Uh, so, that, it, it, that's how it starts. <laughs> I mean, I remember my mom had one briar horse when she was a kid and it was the Bay fighting stallion. He's got a broken foot right now. So as soon as she finds him, I'm going to try and repair it for her. But I never, I always played with grand champions because they were cheap and, and, you know, for a kid, you break them. Oops. Okay. Um, but <laughs> I never really did briars and, um, it, like I said, it just kind of blew up. <laughs> So my house has a lot of them. Uh, I try to help collectors find ones, you know, generations are getting to where they don't want to have their grandparents models. Uh, so they, they don't know what to do with them. And I try to help collectors find them and, and friends find them. And I, getting into the art, I, I just, I was always an artist. So you, as, as one of those, you know, uh, jack of all trade artists. So I do a little bit of everything. And I tried the realistic paint jobs on the briars. I do like doing realism, but deco I feel is a little bit more free. You can do anything you want and yeah. nobody has to judge you on it. So you could do a realistic horse coat color and they'd be like, yeah, that doesn't look right. <laughs> but you can make a candy apple horse and go, yeah, that looks cool. Yeah, the so, decorators, you can do whatever you want. That's awesome. My most popular decorator was my turquoise stone with copper inlay um, for quite a while, and it still is. So they're definitely one of my, my favorites to work on. 
So once you've got your clay all mashed up and good, you're gonna to wanna to roll it into a ball, which balls are easy, put in your palm. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're gonna take that ball and we're gonna turn it, start turning it into a snake. So you're gonna start on your pet, uh, on your, your cording for it basically. So you're gonna take it and the way I find to make it even, and it doesn't have to be even, it's okay. This is a total nonchalant, doesn't have to be perfect at all. Start with your fingers in the middle and then slowly work them out. And then the snake starts growing. So you take your fingers back and it pulls it out again. Fingers and down. What we're making here, these are the little peanuts that go around the legs in your, in your original piece, right? Yep, these are going to be the toppings for the cherry candy coating, which I've got a nice little assortment of pre-cut peanuts. I can get it to, there we go, oh, in here. Are. So this is what we're creating is the clay peanuts. And you just kind of roll the snake out because you just want this. This is all you want. About and how thin are you looking to make your little snake? Uh, you don't want it to be, it, it depends. If you're creating a traditional, sure, may go ahead and make them life-size, but you want to create them to, how, I, I want to, let's see, if you can see the thickness. Yeah. I'd like to go just a little bit thinner and a little bit thicker in places because you want different sizes. Peanuts okay. are random. And you can see how much clay, that little piece of clay, how long it makes. Because now we've got all of this. So I've got a thin strand, a medium looking strand, which when you roll it, just pull it. Roll and pull. And that stretches out the clay. And then I got a little bit thicker piece. Really e simple, easy to do. Um, these pieces, once you've figured out you know, how big your peanut wants to be, if you can actually look, see if I can get to focus on it. It's not very thick, but this is the thicker one and it's gonna yeah. create larger chunks. Now, if you wanna be really detailed about it, you can take clay pastels, or uh, not clay pastels, sorry, chalk pastels. Uh, don't use oil pastels, they won't work, but chalk pastels, it's, it's a chalk coloration. And I just sit the pastel right here. I take a brush um, I, and my X-Acto knife, I scrape off the pastels, take the brush, dip it into the scrapings and I brush it on top. So if you take a darker brown and brush it on top of this clay right now, once it bakes and you pull it out and start cutting it, the outside, the out exterior is going to be a little bit darker, like a real peanut. So if I'll grab my candy apple. You can see that some outside dark coloration on the peanuts, it'll create a different color on the outside and look more realistic. Oh no, a real peanut. <laughs> so once you've got your clay rolled out, you're going to want to put it on a piece of tin foil on a cookie sheet and put it in your oven for about uh, 10 minutes. And once that is baked and cooked, you're going to get a hard piece of clay. It's very pliable still. When pulling it out of the oven, the pan will be hot. The clay will be very warm. So give it a, like a couple of minutes to cool down, but you can still work with it while it's warm. Just don't burn yourself, that's all. So once it's dried, you've got this hard piece of clay. You don't have to bake the clay, but it's recommended to bake the clay so that it's easier to cut. Because the thing is, is baking the clay, it's gonna stay soft and that won't help very well. So cutting the clay is really easy with an exacto knife. So if anybody doesn't have time to bake the clay, uh, it, it's okay. You can cut it and, and see what I mean, but I'll show you how to cut this clay too. Um, this is the one I made for the peanuts. So if you want some time to throw it in the oven, even five minutes will work in the oven because 
they'll still be pliable. And then I've made these like the sprinkles. So I've rolled out more canes. So while we're baking the peanuts, I've rolled out more canes of the snakes, snakes or canes um, sprinkles. So I've got two different kinds of yellows, a green, brown, and an orange. These will be used to create the sprinkles. Very cool. Uh, you can also create little toppers. So what I did was for the original Magnolia, I created a pumpkin. And the pumpkin I made by, once again, using the polymer clay. And you want to roll a ball with the polymer clay. Doesn't have to be perfect because you're going to kind of smish it and create an oval shape or, you know, a lump shape or a pumpkin shape. And you can use your X-Acto knife. You can use the, the bottom of your paintbrush. I have this fancy Sculpey tool that you, you know, any kind of tool that's tipped will work. But to show anybody who just has a paintbrush right now, just put a little hole in the top of the pumpkin. And then you can pull it down to create the grooves of the pumpkin. And then once you're done making that, you that's all good to put in the oven as well? Exactly, yep. Once you've made your pumpkin, uh, you can put that in the oven. The pumpkin, I would give at least 10 minutes because it's a little bit thicker. And so Josie, in the, for the interest of time, um, how do you start to put the peanuts on the legs? Okay, so the peanuts on the legs, you, one, I'll show you real quick how to cut them up. Peanuts, are, it's really easy. You just take your X-Acto knife, slightly tilted to the side and chop it. And then what I like to do, what I found is the easiest way to do it is you roll it as you chop it. So slice. And then you just keep rolling it back and forth and your peanuts come right off. Makes it really quick and easy. And it doesn't matter what size they are. doesn't matter what shape they're in. The more variety, the better. Because then they look more realistic. I love how this workshop that's, you can, if you mess up, you can just run with it and make whatever you want. <laughs> Absolutely. Even if you just chop off a, a really big giant chunk, just go back in there and chop it all up again. And the same for the, the um, sprinkles. I just did five things of sprinkles and then I just chop them. Sprinkles. <laughs> mm -hmm. The cutest, easiest thing to make there. So we're gonna move all these back. And so we've got our peanuts and I did make a few other styles. There's the chocolate and marshmallows. There's my toppers that I had made prior. Um, sprinkles, graham crackers, and coconut. Uh, and I can definitely answer anybody's questions on how to make eat, you know, different types of candy and such. So you take the peanuts and you dump them out. Peanut, there they are. So I've got a stable mate that is dry. This guy right here, is this the right one? This guy right here, he's got his second coating on. So you take your stable mate who is dry. You can see him. Let me it down a little bit so it's a little clearer and you're going to take your glue which any glue will work hot glue if you want to put podge podge on there and just sprinkle it on top that's fine but super glue is my favorite because it's instant so i've got super glue and i'm going to just dab it on the horse anywhere you want the peanuts to be is where you're going to put your super glue and so if you want some peanuts to be on the body, you can put the glue on the body or the face, wherever exactly. you want your peanuts, right? Yep. Wherever you want the peanuts to stick is where you're going to want your glue. So then we're going to take the glue side and just go 
stick it in the pile. Turn it over, you've got peanuts. Oh, that is so cool. Easy to do. You want to add more peanuts, you can throw them on top. Um, that's why I have the tweezers too, just in case I don't want to get my fingers with the glue, adding the peanuts here and there. This is also where it comes in handy for the candy sticks. So real quick, we're gonna go over to the candy sticks and you can decorate them, like I said, any way you want. It doesn't have to be any particular way to do it. I did add some clay on top of the other candy sticks. There's twine. All you gotta do is take your chosen stick, your chosen topping. I'm pulling out the twine right now. So I've got a piece of twine and you're going to want to glue it on just one end of your stick because that's going to start the twine. And I like to wrap it around a few times just to give it a good solid look. And if you don't have that exact twine, you can use ribbon or whatever kind of string you have in the house to decorate your lollipop stick, right? Anything you want. This is a free open project to do whatever you want. I do have some ribbon here for the candy bags at the end. So we're gonna take the twine and all you do is twirl your stick while pulling the twine down and it creates that spiral. Once you get to the bottom, same thing. Take your glue, wrap it around. Make sure it stays and sticks. Hold, like super glue is nice. So you just hold it for a few seconds and mm -hmm. it should be good. And you've got your stick all made. The only other thing left to do is put your candy topping on the top. If you want to, you don't have to, it's totally optional. So once again, glue, pumpkin. And my pumpkin I made with orange clay, green clay and brown clay, but you can use the acrylic paint right on top of the dried clay. And that's actually what I did with the original. No, oh, no, my pumpkin fell. All right, we'll give that a second to set. Stay right there, pumpkin. Let me try a little more glue. And then this stick, after you're done, this um, gets attached to the body of the horse? Correct. So we're gonna once again use the glue. All right, pumpkin's not, he's gonna take a little time. So we'll show you this real quick. Um, you wanna find the center of the horse and you're gonna to wanna to put some glue on the center of the horse. And it's okay to be generous with the glue because we're going to add decoration around the bottom of it too. Take your stick, stick it on the horse. And you're gonna to wanna to let that set for at least a minute to two minutes because that's how long I usually take to have the sticks actually stationary. This work gets tricky with all the glue. Mm -hmm. When the stick is on the horse, see, we'll let him work his way dry. And then you mentioned for the decorations, you just, you can add peanuts or different um, decorations around the base. Yep, so what I've got here is I'm actually was going to add more um, sprinkles to the top of this candy cone or to the, the, the stick. So what I do is I just put glue down just like you did with the peanuts. You put glue down to where you want the topping and you just sprinkle it on top. This one I was a little bit more intricate with where I actually, see, there we go. I actually did placement on where I wanted each individual item. So you can do that. 
or like with my first magnolia, you can put whatever you want, wherever you want. Oh yeah. Okay. So you can see the peanuts on top of her just covering that bottom half of the stick. So it looks a little better. And then the pumpkin on top, glued up on top and then her peanuts down below. And then I did coat these peanuts with more Mod Podge after the glue had set just, or no, this one did, I did without glue, but I do do more Mod Podge after the glue has set. That way it keeps all those pieces from falling off, which you don't want to find random pieces. I mean, you think your model's falling apart, but really simple. Oh, his stick is starting to get in there. But really simple to do, especially the candy coating. And you just throw the glue on there. And then just kind of roll it in. Yep, dip it. And you've got your peanuts. Very cool. That is that is such an easy technique. I love it. And if you set them up after you've done ro rolling them, sometimes you'll have peanuts at the bottom. That way, he'll still stand up <laughs> very nice you can take the pieces off the bottom very nice and to i can you believe it's been 50 minutes already it went by <laughs> so quick <laughs> it does it does you get into making it you're just like oh what time is it again <laughs> so do you have any closing remarks any wrap-ups for um any of our participating artists on the uh who are doing this at home any tips tricks that you want to leave them with and again all this will be recorded so you can go back and watch exactly step by step how to make these adorable candy apple horses it's more or less your imagination and like uh Anybody, I would love to see what anybody has created. Um, I know you can go as far as you want, like creating candy drizzles on top. I know they create like white frosting on top. It's as easy as getting the Mod Podge, putting white acrylic paint in it and drizzling it on top of your candy coating that's already done. Oh, that's a so cute idea. Anything that you can think of, this is why decos are fun. It's doable. Yeah, so if you're doing the workshop from home, make sure you share your really cute creations. I mean, it comes out super cute. Make sure you tag us using hashtag Briar Fun Day, and we would love to see what you create. Absolutely. There. Now the pumpkin's there. <laughs> <laughs> and no, that's that's all I had for. Yeah, that's. That's yeah. awesome. Well, thank you so much, Josie, for this. It was so much fun. This is such a cute idea. And uh, we loved having you here with us today. Thank you. I loved doing it. I can't wait to see everybody else's too. All right. Thank you. Bye.